This week, we welcome Gurpri Sachdeva from Altran to discuss integrating security into DevOps. In the news segment of PNG Android vulnerability, 620 million stolen accounts for sale on the dark web, how shifting security left speeds development, and more. Stay tuned for Application Security Weekly. This is a Security Weekly production. Signal Sciences secures the most important web applications, APIs, and microservices of the world's leading companies, protecting over 7,500 applications and 150 billion production requests per week. Signal Sciences Next Gen WAF and RASP help companies increase security and maintain site reliability without sacrificing velocity, all at the lowest total cost of ownership. Signal Sciences patented technology protects any application against any attack, with integrations into any DevOps tool chain. Signal Sciences demand more from your WAF. Learn more at signalsciences.com forward slash PSW. Welcome to Application Security Weekly. This is episode number 51, recorded February 18th, 2019. I am your host, Matt Alderman, sitting in for Keith Hoodlet, who's traveling this week for work. Joining me is Paul Asadorian from G-Unit Studio in Rhode Island. Welcome, Paul. Hey, thanks, Matt. Good to be here. Yeah, we kind of roll reverse a little bit this week. Yeah been a fun week yeah exactly join us april 1st to 3rd at disney's contemporary resort for infosec world 2019 visit infosecworld.misty.com forward slash security dash weekly and use the registration code os19 dash sec week for 15 percent off the conference or world pass we have a number of interviews scheduled with confirmed speakers across all of our shows so tune in to learn more about the topics that will be covered at the conference also, we will be recording at InfoSec World 2019. If you're interested in booking an interview or briefing with the Security Weekly team, please visit securityweekly.com forward slash conference request to learn more. Also, check out our on-demand material. Some of our previously recorded webcasts, including last week's webcast with ExtraHop, are now available on on-demand at securityweekly.com forward slash on-demand. All right, let's get on with our guest introduction. Gurpreet Sachdeva is the Assistant Vice, Pre Assistant Vice President of Technology with Altran. Gurpreet has over 20 years of experience with software, DevOps, cloud computing, and security. He has authored a book on Elastic Stack titled Practical Elastic Stack. He has recently published a video course in collaboration with Pact Publishers titled Practical DevOps Security. Gurpreet, welcome to Application Security Weekly. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. Well, I saw your video and I said, we, we should do an interview segment with you because you and I think a lot alike about this concept of DevSecOps and the integration of security into the DevOps process. And so I, I kind of for our listeners, I think we're going to break this down, people, process, technology, and talk right. about those three different components and what does that mean for DevSecOps? And so let's start with people a little bit. And I think it's important a little bit to understand what are the needs and challenges of both DevOps and security in this new world of, of DevOps? Right, absolutely. So we all know that, you know, uh, DevOps is a combination of uh, all the different activities which we were doing for many, many years, like you know, development, testing, operations. It's kind of like a new moniker, which combines everything. It's like an umbrella term. And you know, while Agile stopped at Scrum boundaries, uh, DevOps you know, extended beyond the Scrum boundaries towards the production side also. So uh, we have been doing that. Uh, a lot of organizations have had uh, various levels of success with uh, DevOps. But the interesting thing is that uh, the way we were doing uh, security uh, checks, uh, that was more of like waterfallish in a sense. What I'm trying to say is that uh, there was a luxury we had in the waterfall era where the releases, you know, used to go maybe in four, five, or six months, you know, kind of time frame. 
uh, but that era is gone now. Now you're talking about a release, you know, practically every sprint, you have to deploy continuously on the production. So that luxury is not there. You cannot wait for four months or three months or two months uh, to do your security checks. You have to practically do it every sprint. Okay, every sprint may not be still, you know, practical for various reasons, but it has to be done more frequently because uh, uh, when we do that towards the end of the release cycle, uh, more often than not, you know, earlier we used to see a lot of gaps. I mean, the InfoSec guys used to prepare a detailed report and they used to, you know, say these are the vulnerabilities and you'll have to go and fix that. Otherwise, the release is blocked. Uh, we used to work towards fixing them uh, more often than not. What used to happen was that uh, there used to be some design and architecture level changes also. Releases used to get delayed because of that. Uh, when you have a six months kind of a release, uh, there's still some, you know, uh, some breathing space. You begin adjust some uh, cycles here and there. Uh, but when we're talking about uh, a weekly sprint or a two week or a three week kind of a sprint model, there's no breathing space. If you get blocked towards the end of a sprint or towards the release cycle, uh, it's going to have very disastrous consequences. So that is why the industry felt the need that why not use uh, the principles of DevOps to make our software more secure. So that's, I think, really the essence of uh, DevSecOps. And it, this idea really was you know, uh, uh, popularized initially by uh, Neil McDonald from Gartner in 2012. The idea being that don't be afraid of DevOps practices and don't curse DevOps to you know, uh, uh, turn security checks around. Let's use those practices to make our software more secure. Yeah, so I think the one big challenge I see, right, is DevOps is all about speed, agility, portability, right? They want right. to code fast, get code into production to stay super agile with what they're doing. I think the challenge for security on the other side has been we're not used to that speed, right? I, I use my vulnerability management um, example. How many people scan their network quarterly, monthly, daily, right? I, I mean, we don't see daily scans necessarily, even in the VM space. And when we think about DevOps, we're thinking about code releases potentially daily or even multiple times a day. And it's that exactly. it's, it's those two opposing components that I think are, are really challenging for DevSecOps is the speed on this side and not being really ready for that speed on the other side. Yeah, I think that's a very good question. So yes, indeed, uh, in the DevOps world now we see uh, companies like uh, Amazon, you know, shipping um, shipping a fix or a you know feature probably every ten to twelve seconds. They have thousands of deployments in a day, right? And that software is live into the production, and you need to make sure that uh, system is secure because uh, people's you know uh, credentials, people's privacy information, people's uh, Backing account information and whole sort of other information is, you know, linked to that. It, it could not happen that you're releasing software thousands times a day, and then you know, uh, you say that you know we are running a vulnerability check, maybe you know, uh, uh, quarterly or monthly or so. And I think uh, to that point that uh, we were not used to, you know, running these scanners uh, uh, very too often was that uh, most of the uh, checks and balances were manual in nature, right? We used to rely more on the human expertise. Like we used to have some uh, so-called security champions who were like uh, experts in these areas. They could probably look at some, uh, uh, you know, issues and they can quickly recognize that okay, this is a vulnerability. And uh, uh, I mean, no denying their expertise, no denying the value of those people. Those people are still required today. Uh, but then we have to think how we can automate, you know, our uh, security processes also uh, in the DevOps model. The idea being that uh, how to you know, have all the checks and balances in various phases of the CI-CD pipeline, starting from the planning and design phase and going till you know, the, uh, the deployment and monitoring and adaptation phase and so on and so forth. Yeah, that be, is you know, what, what you got me thinking about was something I, I've been uh, trying to work into my presentation uh, that I'm giving, I think at RSA, one of them anyway. And the, the concept was I, I like went back in time to when I was a firewall administrator and I had to support applications, right? This is before really a lot of virtualization, before containers and DevOps and all that stuff. Right. And most developers or software development companies that had provided us software, when I asked them the question, so what ports you know, need to be open and what needs to be trusted by your application so that you know, when I put it in, I can put some controls around it. 
very rarely could anyone really answer that question. It was often sure. up to me, like you said, human expertise to uh, figure all that out. Now we fast forward to DevOps and developers, QA in these test systems are getting built whole systems automatically. Uh, how do we fill that gap in knowledge or like where do we stand with that gap in knowledge? Because I'm, I'm really concerned right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because earlier, you know, we used to have siloed uh, security teams, for example, like there used to be experts like you, for example, who know firewall in and out. And uh, developers used to typically say that, hey, I'm just going here to make an awesome application and I probably don't care about security. Right. So now we need to, uh, we are in a situation where we are saying that, hey, we, we need to use the principles of DevOps for security checks. So how do we make sure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, you know the stress is not only one or two people. Mm. So the idea being, I think uh, security is no longer one person's job. It's everybody's job, right? So uh, every, I mean, it needs a lot of training also, or maybe unlearning and then learning. Like uh, devs, you know, needs to be trained in security processes. Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't mean that everybody has to be an expert in all the areas. Uh, of course not. But then uh, the task which they are doing, uh, you know. Uh, security checks also is part of that. For example, like uh, when we went into uh, DevOps model, right? Uh, we used to have roles like, let's say, uh, a developer, a QA guy, and an ops guy, right? Mm -hmm. And the same kind of uh, discussions were in those days also. But finally, these roles merged. Uh, we see, you know, the same guy doing all different roles in, you know, various uh, uh, times of the day or maybe various, you know, uh, uh, days of a sprint, for example. Similarly, uh, people have to, you know, know that uh, what are the things they need to take care of, you know, uh, uh, while making a software. The reason being that, let's say I'm an architect, I'm designing a system. I need to make sure that uh, what kind of uh, softwares I'm integrating with, whether they are, you know, have the latest vulnerability patches or not. And I think one more interesting thing which has happened is this, is that uh, we do not code that much. I mean, whenever we make some kind of a software, I kind of say that we are not developing software, we are actually assembling software. Reason mm -hmm. being that uh, we're integrating more and more third-party software and open source. I mean, which in any case is a very good thing to do. I mean, open source is great because it gives you a lot of heads up and you uh, get to use a lot of awesome you know, uh, software. But then we need to make sure that uh, the security of those uh, uh, you know, libraries or frameworks is also up to the mark because let's say if I'm releasing my product in the, in the market or if I have a SaaS-based software, I mean, and I'm using some third party and if something goes wrong, I cannot tell my customers that, hey, it's not my problem. You know, it was a third party library and, you know, really what um, I don't, I mean, I cannot, you know, uh, uh, take care of those things. So, so this is what has another, uh, you know, dimension to the uh, problem. Uh, but I think coming back to my initial point that I think um, uh, two things have to be done. Uh, the people's mindset has to change. They need to think that uh, security is everybody's job. It's not just one person's job. And then people need to be trained. Yeah, yeah. Agree. which means security and DevOps have to really come together, right? I think that's the important mm -hmm. part here is we can't stay two siloed organizations Absolutely. if we're going to solve this bigger problem. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about process because what I want to understand is where, where are some of the key areas where we should be integrating specific security checks or aspects into the DevOps process? You know, you've got you talked about the architecture side of this. Um, there's the, the assembly or build process. You get it ready to go ship and, and get it out into production. Let's talk through where some of those key integration points with security should be. Yeah, so I think uh, the, uh, I would not say that there's a, you know, some particular areas only or some you know, uh, parts in the pipeline where we have to uh, put more secure, uh, focus on security. I think, in my view, each and every phase of uh, development cycle, uh, we have to take care of uh, security aspects. Let's say uh, it starts even at the planning phase. For example, uh, we are starting a release, right? Uh, we need to, let's say, uh, create a roadmap. Uh, maybe the product managers, the architects need to create a roadmap. They maybe need to create a backlog of uh, features or stories which they want to do in, let's say, next two, three, four, five sprints. It's very important to think about the security debt also. The security backlog also. What kind of uh, uh, you know scanners and tests and security related checks they want to do throughout the release? They should be thought of, uh, and they should be you know put like user stories. 
and then those user stories should be spread across the release rather than having you know all the security related uh, checks and balances being done towards the end of the release which really gives us a scenario like a security sandwich we want to avoid that so uh, the security planning starts right at the backlog preparation phase uh, then we come to the design phase right there we can use techniques like uh, thread modeling and uh, data flow diagrams etc to really to analyze that uh, what will be the critical parts of my system which i'm designing uh, which needs to be focused on uh, uh, when we actually start implementation of that and people can already start looking at that uh, and this is where the infosec champs uh, would help like uh, the architects and the developers can create this uh, analysis and diagrams and then the infosec guys can come in and comment that uh, whether you know what you're thinking is uh, going to lead to some problems or we will still have a secure software now when we come to the actual implementation right so that is the time when we are doing coding we are doing unit testing for example uh, while doing uh, our coding for example uh, we do code reviews we have always been doing code reviews right and code inspections so the people who do code reviews uh, they have to be trained so they also keep an eye for security vulnerabilities if uh, let's say there are some array buffers being used in some native language like c for example if there are some buffer segmentation or array out of bound kind of things uh, many often they can lead to security challenges also right so they have to keep an eye for that uh, and when we start doing uh, the unit test uh, i mean we do mostly automated tests and then we have uh, even today code coverage and all that stuff along with that we need to integrate static scanners maybe you know things like uh, find bugs or sonar cube for example and then uh, dynamic scanners can also be included so the sc so static scanners of course to a uh, 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 just a scan at the static time they're just passing through the code and giving you a lot of areas where you should think of uh, uh, doing a proper hardened code and then when you run the ut actually at that time you can run dynamic scanners which can uh, help you uh, understand how your software is with respect to security uh, you can also do interactive application security test which actually instruments your binaries from the inside so both um, the dynamic scanning typically is a black box kind of thing, but when you do IaaS, that is more of a white box. The binary gets instrumented. You run your automated test cases in your pipeline, right? So you're already into DevOps. You already are writing your test cases. You don't need to do anything extra. You run just those cases, and it's going to tell you like it's going to vomit. You know what is happening inside your uh, software with respect to security. Uh, when before, during the deployment phase, you can think of doing things like Chaos Monkey. Like Netflix is a company which has really popularized this style of uh, testing and the whole Simon Army tools. You can pick and choose and run some of those tools. You can run first tests to see how to further harden the uh, system. Uh, during the configuration phase, uh, you can make sure that your binaries are timestamped. Uh, we are also doing. Uh, uh, you can use techniques like defense in depth while deploying because uh, most of the software, at least in the in the cloud world or the virtualized world, either we're using some containers, even if you're running on-prem, or you're deploying on some kind of a cloud environment, whether that's a private cloud, public cloud, et cetera. So you build mechanisms like defense in depth. You have your binaries uh, signed and time signed, time stamped, sorry, to ensure the integrity. And during after the you know. Uh, uh, deployment you can still go ahead and do something like a penetration test you can do or rather in the pre-prod environment you do vulnerability test penetration test just to see like how hardened your software is right uh, there's no harm in you know let's say you have uh, uh, two three instances of your uh, uh, services running and doing some kind of test on one or two instances and even if they go down that's fine uh, rest of the uh, instances are still running uh, to service the customers and despite all you do right uh, there could be still some uh, gaps which may leak to the production. And that is where we need to make sure that we do a continuous monitoring of the software in production, which is to it in 24 cross sevens. You need to build mechanisms like uh, metrics and stats and dashboards, for example, alarms, alerts, et cetera, so that you know how your software is behaving. Uh, you collect a lot of metrics and then uh, they serve as a funnel back to your uh, design phase. So like uh, for the next upcoming sprints or releases, uh, you know what the gaps were in the earlier phases, and then you can uh, maybe you create some kind of a security uh, debt or a security backlog and uh, add this uh, uh, 
production you know observations there and in the next phase or next cycle you try to address those so all in all in all the phases of your deployment to ci cd pipeline you have to make sure that you do uh, uh, some of the other you know security checks and balances right yeah, I mean, I think it's not one spot, right? I mean, to your yeah. point, there's source code analysis tools, there's static analysis tools, there's dynamic, interactive. You know, now we see container-specific uh, security solutions that are yep. that are looking at both the static and the runtime side of the equation for the applications. And there's steps all across there where the integration of Absolutely. security tools yep. and checks make sense. Um, I, my question is, how, how do we get a good software inventory or almost like a parts list of everything that's in our software? And that's becoming, uh, I think has, has already been mentioned, really, really important as, sure, I can borrow op open source components or use open source components, but how do I constantly check the validity of those open source components? And we've seen a huge trend where essentially attackers are poisoning the waterhole, right? That waterhole could be your um, your NPM package management could be your Python, you know, pip libraries, whatever the case may be. So how do we have a good inventory and a plan to adjust that moving forward? Uh, you can use uh, uh, techniques like um, uh, software composition analysis, SCF for short. And I think uh, uh, it is an important aspect because we are using so many third party softwares and uh, it becomes very important to make sure that whatever we are using, uh, it has no vulnerabilities. So while let's say, uh, I think it start it starts at the phase, you know, initial phases itself, and you decide on picking certain libraries. Uh, just make sure that the uh, versions which you're uh, taking, uh, there are no open vulnerabilities for that. I think uh, almost uh, all these various, uh, at least the credible, you know, uh, software libraries uh, keep on announcing their own vulnerability patches. We need to keep an eye for that, uh, so that uh, we can use our SCL list and to see that. Uh, we are not, you know, using a software which is vulnerable for that matter. Then there are, you know, uh, notifications from uh, government bodies, also like Department of Defense, etc. Where if there are some challenges, with certain, you know, important uh, softwares, they kind of keep on uh, giving uh, those announcements. So you need to keep an eye for that, and I think uh, use SCA tools to create a list of all your third-party softwares uh, which you're using. Uh, this is kind of an inventory, and this is going to help. Uh, in the you know the production cycle you know it's interesting I, I think if we got everyone up to the level where they're doing static analysis dynamic analysis uh and you know taking an inventory and, and checking against various public sources and others that if everyone's using various open source libraries if your devops and devsecops process is really good you should be reporting vulnerabilities back to, I mean, you should be discovering vulnerabilities right. in other people's that's, software if your process is good in reporting them, right? That's the that's, level that's where I'd true. like to see people get to. Absolutely. So the last thing I want to cover just quickly is, you know, technology is changing pretty fast around us in this new containerized world, right? We have the um, introduction of container as a service offerings from Amazon and Google and, and Microsoft. We're now seeing true container as a service platforms like uh, ACI and Fargate from AWS. What does that do or change for us as we think about development? Because I, you know what I see is this abstraction away of certain layers at the network and the endpoint layer. What does that do, if anything, to the tools we're using for security or how we're doing DevOps? I just I, I see this constant evolution of technology change, and I think it's it's pretty disruptive to some of the things we've traditionally done. Uh, yeah, that's right. I think um, uh, this is one of the things of our industry. Whether you uh, like it or you not like it, like every new every every of the day, we see some new facilities, some new features, some new services being launched, and. Uh, you need to, you know, kind of uh, uh, keep up to the pace, right? So you uh, very aptly said that there are many uh, services like container as a service, or you don't need to do all the uh, heavy duty stuff, infra stuff yourself. You can use public cloud sub service providers, for example. Well, certainly they take uh, some of your uh, load, for example, maybe you don't need to worry about a firewall for that matter, because they are probably taking care of that, and, uh, you know, at a, uh, 
really at a lower level of the stack they're taking care of those kind of things but i think still uh, it's your software why i'm trying to say is that uh, there are things like for example uh, let's say authentication for that matter right can, people can still try to uh, uh, you know maybe use some kind of uh, vulnerable you know tools like maybe injections maybe uh, cross site forgery those things can still be you know done and they can still kind of try to hack your application and uh, you know for example any cloud provider they giving you a platform to host your software but end of the day what you're doing in your software it's your responsibility so that is something which you still need to uh, take care of right you can probably uh, think of you know uh, optimizing your you know checks and balances you can probably uh, make sure that you are spending more energies on um, scanners and maybe doing uh, uh, vulnerability tests or pen tests etc you don't probably need to do a port scanner or you don't need to do you know some kind of a firewall test and those kind of things but at the end of the day you just still take care of uh, these kind of things and another aspect you know which i'd like to touch upon is that like, uh, devsecops is also another awesome you know way to do uh, for compliance right Uh, especially if you're giving your software for some kind of a government agency or department of defense for example you need to follow certain security rules and uh, you can probably you know uh, ensure that through your automated tests similarly we have now gdpr coming in so end of the day uh, it's your software which is going to make sure that it's gdpr compliant uh, amazon or microsoft is not going to uh, do that for you right at the end of the day it's 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 your code you better secure it yeah Yeah. Yeah. Paul, do you have any other questions for Gurpreet? I do not. Awesome. Gurpreet, thank you so much for joining us on Application Security Weekly. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. If anyone wants to see his video course, please visit pact p a c k t pub.com. We'll take a quick break and then cover the news for this week. <laughs>